do a wee bit of a revision on, um, to start with, the types of solids that we have to learn some information about and link their properties to their structure and bonding. So the first thing I want to ask the class is, what are the four types of solids that we have been introduced to this year? Metallic. Metallic. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to, sorry, stop talking to the board. Um, when it comes to doing a question in NCA, make sure when it says solid type or substance type, that's your answer, one of those four. Okay, so you're going to have a table where it probably, or a question where it's going to ask you what type of substance is magnesium oxide, or what type of substance is silicon dioxide, or whatever. Um, that's your answer, is one of these, whichever is correct. Then they might be saying, asking you to identify the types of particles present in those substances. So we'll pick these off one at a time and say, what are the particles? So what do we have in an ionic compound or ionic solid? Ions. Ions. Be more specific. Cations. Cool. Cations. <coughs> And anions, okay? So your positives and your negatives. Cool. In a solid, are they able to move? No. No. They can vibrate, but they can't move. Um, why not? Why, why are they stuck in place? Cool. And what type of bonding do they have? Direction. Sorry? Direction. They are a type of directional bond. What's the name of that bond? Cool. So... Ch chosen this one, they're held together. The force that holds them together is an ionic bond. Cool. And it, as said, it's directional. So it's, it's strong and it's in one direction. You have to break it. You can't just move an ion. You actually have to break the bond to move a particle. Okay? Let's go clockwise. Molecular. What are the particles? This is probably the easiest one. What are the particles in these? And you don't have to be over specific with this. Molecules. Molecules, cool. And again, don't be too fancy with your words. <coughs> what are the particles that hold those molecules together, albeit quite weakly usually? Intermolecular, Intermolecular forces, sometimes Van der Waals, London forces, dispersion forces. There's a list of them. The name is intermolecular though, for all of them. And when you get to next year, things like hydrogen bonds, all that sort of thing start coming into that. Okay, covalent networks. What are, I'm going to go down, I think, because I'm running out of screen space there. What are our particles in these? It's a little bit harder. Atoms. Sorry? Atoms. Well done. They're atoms. They have not gained or lost electrons. They're sharing them, which is why it's a covalent network. So because the electrons are being shared, they've stayed as atoms. The giveaway there is what are the forces between the particles? Covalent bonds. Covalent bonds. Cool. And I'm hoping this will fit in the screen. Again, directional, but not nearly as strong as the ionic bonds. However, um, because there's multiple covalent bonds for each atom in these, so things like graphite, diamond, silica, which is glass, um, that's why they're hard and often very brittle. Of course, graphite's not brittle because it's in layers which can slide over each other. So there's an extra thing you need to keep in mind about that. So just put up here, NB, graphite. That kind of breaks all the rules. So that's one to know about. Okay, lucky last. Probably the hardest one to actually explain a lot of the properties, but the one you know the most about because you've known what a metal is since you were little. What are the particles? Be specific. Cations and... Valence electrons, cool. You can call them atoms in an exam that would be classed as correct. Okay. So what creates the relationship between these that actually holds it together as a solid? Because I mean, you know, electrons are tiny. Charges. The charges, it is. It's an electric attraction. And what do we call that electric attraction? Remarkably easy name considering that it's a metallic solid. Metallic bond, well done. 
So that would lead me to another question. Ionic bonds and metallic bonds are both electrostatic or electric attractions, positives and negatives. How come I can't bend and shape an ionic solid, but I can bend and shape malleability and ductility, pull into a wire? How come I can bend and shape a metallic solid? Good. Metallic bonds are not directional. I can move a cation from one place to another, and its relationship with the sea of electrons doesn't get weakened. It changes, but because it's radial, not in one direction, it's in every direction, I can move that cation without breaking that bond. All I do is just redirect it, basically. Okay. Um, which of those will conduct electricity as solids? Covalent networks only if it's graphite. Only if it's graphite, because that has that sea of electrons between the two sheets. Okay, because each carbon's got three covalent bonds. The other one, other electron goes into the sea in between. Anything else up there? Though? Metallic. Metallics. So why can these conduct electricity as a solid? Here we said that these couldn't because they were stuck in place. Cool. It's a, we call it a sea of valence electrons because it implies that it can flow like the ocean. And that's exactly what can happen. Electrons are motile. They are able to move. Um, all of the valence electrons from all of the atoms go together to create that sea of valence electrons. Okay, To be part of that bonding. So that's an overview of your solid types. It's now, how do I use that understanding of their structure and bonding to explain things like their malleability or conversely how brittle they are, their hardness, um, their melting and boiling points, whether they will dissolve in water or not, whether they'll react with water instead, that sort of thing. So that's your next challenge is how to take that knowledge and apply it to a question.